Good evening and welcome to the Hoosier Huddle after the dust settles on Indiana's disheartening 24-17 loss at Rutgers on Saturday. Uh, we've digested it. We've, uh, we've uh, I, I don't know, thought on it, slept on it. And I, I think we all agree that we feel kind of like my friend Frankenstein over here, just green and sick um, over it. Alex, I wanted to ask you first, uh, because we had this conversation in the group chat yesterday and apathy starting to set in. And Zach, I'll ask you that question because you're on campus and with uh, the young folks. Just take us through your feelings, Alex. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. I said the same thing after the Maryland game last week, but, you know, I uh, – and we, we talked about it at the beginning of the season, if you lose that Cincinnati game, not letting it snowball. And here we are in a five-game losing streak now. And again, another, another game you had an opportunity to win, another game where, you know, you should win that. You know, their quarterback throws for just over 100 yards and they win that game. I just... We, we talked a lot about, you know, identity and, and what do we do? You know, what, what do we do well? Um, I don't know. We don't have anything easy right now where when things start to go off the rails like they did after the first quarter, especially on offense, we have nothing easy that you can rely on. We have no easy plays. We have no easy get back in a rhythm not really a sense of, you know, confidence or calmness, not very steady. These are all things that, you know, good or average or stable programs have. You always feel like you can get back in a game or. I mean, well, look at Rutgers, for example. Books. It seemed like every time they needed a play, they threw the ball to Johnny Langan or one of their receivers on the sideline, like a five yard out route um, or a five yard, you know, just a little toss across the middle to, to Johnny Lang. And, and I mean, their drives, they didn't really have all that many explosive plays outside of that, that Crookshank reverse. They just, they did what they do and that's their identity. And right. You're right. IU right now doesn't have an identity other than that. The identity is we have no identity. Yeah. And it's, it's been the same thing, right. You know, a Rutgers team, you know, you lose two years in a row now, you lose 38 to three last year, their left tackle catches a touchdown pass. You let them win their first big 10 conference game at home since 2017. They've clowned you two years in a row. Rutgers football has clowned you two years in a row now. And we're adding to our lead as the losing is program in FBS history with 701 losses and counting. Now Tom Allen, again, still stuck on 29 career wins. We'll talk about it at the end. Who knows if he even gets to 30, but I don't know. It's another game where you felt like you just needed somebody to make a play. You needed one play and that game flips. You have all the momentum back. You have all the energy back. You have all the emotion back, but instead it's three and out. I think they had four, three and outs in a row in the second half. Looking at they the stats had, again, they had I think after 85 the first yards. Quarter, they had 85 yards in the second half. And like after that second drive, it was like a hundred and something yards. Yeah. It's just the, the third out of halftime again. And the BTN crew talked about it at halftime. Just second half has been a disaster for Indiana, which is not anything necessarily new, but you come out of the locker room and you have negative two yards and you run five plays in the entire third quarter. And then the fourth quarter, you have 87 yards, most of which was on the last drive in garbage time. So again, you have three quarters. The second quarter, you have 44 yards. Third quarter, you have negative two yards. How do you do that? How do you do that? I just, it, <laughs> UT Martin against Tennessee probably had more yards in the third quarter than Indiana had against Brock. It's just, and then the fourth quarter, again, garbage time. You don't even break 300 yards against the worst team in the Big Ten statistically so far this season. I think right now IU and Northwestern are in a race to the bottom. 
I, I don't know. It's, and I, you know, we talked about apathy kind of setting in at the beginning. This is here. I'm at my, my desk in my office in my apartment. I look at this every day. I bought a Rose Bowl ticket when we played USC off eBay. I have it hung on my desk, you know, right above where my computer sits. That feels impossible. Not that it ever felt really attainable, but man, I, you know, and I just, I'm a, I'll always support them and I'll always follow or, you know, always be IU football first over everything, but it, it is tough. I just, I don't know, Zach, what do you kind of think? And, and what are you kind of feeling on campus? Because like it or not, you have a bye week and then four games left, but basketball season is pretty much here. So. Yeah, I think on campus basketball season is here and it has been for uh, a week or two now. Um, I tend to disagree as far as, um, you know, that we've come out of the second half like flat because we didn't do that against Cincinnati. Um, It was just the first half. I think it was just been inconsistency as a whole. And I mean, you know, there's the program has no identity. You know, if you look at Rutgers, you can, you can describe it, you can, you know, state it, but, you know, the, 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 the Hoosiers have no identity. That's, that's all you have to really know. And here on campus, it's like, I don't, I don't know how it was when you were here, but it's like, no one cares. (laughs) I watched the game. When I was a student, it was the beginning of the Hep era into the Lynch era. And it was still, you're still recovering from Donardo's years. And it was like, people didn't even realize that football was being played. They went and tailgated and maybe you get, you, you definitely, it was definitely a regular student crowd was smaller than the student crowd that they had against Maryland. And maybe, you know, if IU is winning, like they did uh, against Iowa in 2006, like the students then kind of slowly migrated over the field, but it was, I mean, I, it was like, people thought I was crazy. Like, okay, it's, it's, we're, yeah, it's 11, I mean, 1130. We're, we're heading over. I'm heading over to grab seats and go to the game. I think um, the athletic department, which must be just like kicking themselves with football right now. Um, Sammy, I just want to ask you, like, going forward throughout the season, um, do you think we'll see a change at the quarterback position? We're going to talk about that in in a second. Let's put Rutgers to to, to bed and and next steps. All right. Yeah, Um, let's put it to bed. Yeah, I just – I want to get a quick note in. I Post-COVID here, the student support and the crowds have not been the issue. I think they've been fantastic. They have been. Yeah. You know, when I was, I was a student, I was the, you know, in between the Wilson to Allen transition. So, you know, I drove a minivan from Chicago to New York for the pinstripe bowl and then went out to the San Fran for the Foster Farms bowl. So yeah, I, student Levi's. support has been, has been great. So yeah. that, I don't think that's the issue, but you know, it's the same thing every week it feels like. So well, yeah, I well, say one more thing. Um, I think a lot of, the people my age saw that you know when I was a freshman saw that that team that beat Penn State and beat you know Michigan and made it to the Outback Bowl and they wanted to live kind of that excitement and this was the year where we're supposed to have it and you know when that doesn't happen it's just a depressing feeling so oh been there I, i've seen them lose to one you know it was then one double a southern illinois uh there was a 14-7 loss to yukon where there was maybe a couple thousand people in the stands in the rain uh seen them lose at bowling green seen them lose to the ball state three times um you know they, they just mount up i remember it i you know i you had beaten iowa and michigan state and they were heading up to Minnesota to become bowl eligible and it wasn't a great Minnesota team they were all right um it was 2006 and like eight minutes into the game it's 28 nothing gophers and that's just it that sums up 
what you feel and, and all that stuff. But uh, moving on from Rutgers, IU enters uh, the, the bye week at a kind of a point of transition. They're not going to dump Tom Allen at the bye week. That would totally be like shocking. Um, but I do think, uh, and Zach, to your point on the quarterback, I, I do think they need to, to, you know, take stock of what they have. And, you know, Jack Tuttle's not going to be the backup quarterback. He's already announced he's going to the transfer portal. So if he's playing backup quarterback now, they, they said that, well, he's still the backup. He's still part of the team. He, look, Jack's a good, a, 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 a good human being. Um, he's been nothing but great to us and his family is fantastic, but he brings you no value from, from next year on. He, he's out the door. Uh, you know, you, you, so it, it's got to be Dexter Williams or Brandon Swordsby, as somebody who's going to be here that you could hang your hat on. Okay. This is what he could do well. Cause there's been too many times. And Alex, we've discussed this in years past where it's like, I, even in those blowout wins where, you know, maybe they played Tuttle for a drive or two, they didn't run their offense. They never brought in a backup quarterback outside of an injury into big time. Like, those reps are super valuable. Like, why not get Dexter Williams in the game against Michigan when you're down 31-10? Um, and I asked Tom Allen that. They, he gave his standard answer of they'll, they'll evaluate everything and, and all that stuff. Do I think Dexter Williams gets the nod at starter against Penn State? Probably not. But I think they need to start playing him. And maybe by Michigan State and Purdue, uh, you, you you, you start them because that's what Kevin Wilson did in 2011. They, they started the year with Edward Wright Baker and Dusty Keel, and they were awful. You bring in a true freshman, Trey Roberson, who, yeah, IU went one and 11, but it gave you some glimpse of hope that they, he, this guy could run their offense. Um, and, and, you know, he went into Iowa and, and put up points. He put up points against Northwestern. Um, you know, they had a decent game against Purdue at the end of the year. But he gave you a little bit of hope, and I think that's what IU needs to do. And, yeah, you, throw, you threw him to the fire. You kind of burned his red shirt. But it, it, it doesn't matter. It ended up not mattering because he broke his leg in the second game and a stupid game at UMass. Um, but that was, you know, he showed you that he could run Kevin Wilson's offense and do it well because in 2013 – he he had that offense humming, and outside of a backwards pass against Minnesota, that team's going to a bowl game uh, and, and putting up big numbers. And and you know if if Wilson didn't botch that whole quarterback scenario, you know you might have twenty fourteen. The whole program might be different. And but we're not going to go down that rabbit hole. IU needs to figure out what they have, um, and you can't outside of offense alignment these days and maybe some defense alignment, you can't redshirt people and hold on to them because they're going to leave. They're going to hit the transfer portal. So I would like to see Dexter Williams get some in-game reps, whether that's switching series, whether that's okay, Connor Basilak, you get the first quarter. Dexter Williams, you get the second quarter. If it's a quick hook, whatever. Just show me something different. And, you know, if Cam Camper is done for the year, that offense, once he went out, that offense just shut down, which is extremely worrying because one player shouldn't be able to have that big of an impact at the wide receiver position. Um, and the reluctancy to play Omar Cooper, it's like, all right, roster management has changed. It's not 1990 anymore. You can't just sit on your red shirt and, you know, you have guys for four years or say, oh, you're going to – no. Let guys play, see what you have, because you know what? This coaching staff might not be here for that long. What are yeah, your thoughts and, on that, Alex? Yeah, I think you're right. And I think, you know, maybe during the bye week, you see some of that stuff kind of happen. But four games left, so anybody that hasn't played yet could play every snap of the last four games and still keep a red shirt. So a guy like Sorsby, that's probably your backup if – if they go with Williams full time, but I saw some people saying, you know, let, let Tuttle try, put Tuttle in. No, he's in the portal. I understand he's dressed, but he's not gonna, 
come in and lose his last year by playing two games in mop up duty. He's not going to, he's not going to come in to take a couple snaps and, and lose his ability to transfer. And it's, it does IU nothing. It does nothing right. for IU. You know, kind of know what Jack Tuttle is. You had the chance to play him early in the season. You had the chance to make him a starter at the beginning of the year. And apparently he was beaten out. So, you know, yeah, he is. But, yeah, just, but generally for the foreseeable now, yeah. future, it, it's, it's, he, is, he is a net zero at that position. So stop with the Tuttle time. It's Dexter Williams time. That's what it is. It's Dexter Williams time. It's, you know, go play Jalen Lucas. Go play these young linemen as well. See what you have. Because, and we'll talk about it in a second, Allen's future. If all odds are is he's back next year. It, that's where the smart money is. He's back next year. If you don't turn it around next year, it's over. Like, you're done. So you got to take, take stock of what you have, who can play, what you need to do and, and go in the portal and get and hope hope to God that you could recruit at some sort of level after going, you know, three and nine or four and eight again uh, after a two and 10 season. Um, you, you just got to you got to figure out what you need. Go to back to the drawing board uh, and, and all those and all those things. But I'm. You, you can't run Connor ba- Basilek out there. A- anymore it does he no good your your bowl game is essentially off the table um you know it, it's not official but you don't see them beating penn state and ohio state the next two games and that will put you at seven losses and, and take you out of bowl contention and i don't think you wait till you're out of you know you're mathematically eliminated from a bowl game to play these guys go get them meaningful meaningful snaps against two of the best teams in the conference and and see where you lie and do your evaluation there because you're not a value apparently you know you, you can't do it in practice uh and just get these guys some reps um, yeah i would I, like it's... to add that walt bell should be held accountable and it's not all on bays like like i just look at you know and it infuriated me like most like you know we're at nebraska we get the ball to receive the game we call a timeout and then we go three and out right we get two yards like so bell should be held accountable and thinking about the moves the program has made within the past two years you know i think maybe we should have just gotten rid of uh maybe we shouldn't have gotten rid of sheridan i don't know which who recruited dexter williams was it kaylin de boer okay he was the le- he was the only quarterback recruit that Kalen DeBoer had, and look, I, if we're gonna bash Tom Allen for hiring guys, you have to give him credit for hiring Kalen DeBoer and Kane Womack. Those two guys, they caught lightning in a bottle. They had an identity uh, at least in 2020 on on defense. They had an identity in 2019 on offense. Kalen DeBoer went to bat for Nick Sheridan, and that's why Nick Sheridan ended up as the, as the offensive coordinator probably in retrospect not the best hire but yeah you know if you're gonna knock Walt Bell for his play calls there are plays that are open that Connor Basilak just misses there are you know you know we tweeted out that that gif of whoever idiot on the Knicks because that's the team I like and that's Jack maybe Jared yeah Jared, because that's what Nick, the Knicks do, throwing the ball 15 rows into the stands. Um, it, it's – there are non-competitive throws that are – they're open. The guy has a step or two, you know, half a step a step uh, or two on, on the defender, and the ball is landing five, six, seven yards in front of the receiver – we have no shot. You, I don't care who you are. You're not laying out and uh, and and making that catch. It's you, and you're not getting a flag call either. That's another thing. You got to If you put it on the receiver, you might get that pass interference call. But there, there's yeah. just too many non-competitive throws. There's too many, you know, overthrowing. I, I forgot it was a Barner in the flat on a screen that, or it's, you know, Josh, one of the running backs on the screen, they had set up really well and he throws it four feet over the guy's head. That that's the thing. Yeah. Are there, there plays 
is Walt Bell's first down play calling head scratching at times? Yeah, it is. Are there the, the third down draw and the field goal that we missed? Is, is it head scratching? Yeah. But it's not all on Walt Bell, just like it's not all on Connor Bazelak. But at the same time, you have to, as Alex said at the beginning, we can't do anything easy. We can't make those easy throws. We throw it four feet over the guy's head. So to me, it, it's on everybody. It, it's a team game. Walt Bell's not out there throwing interceptions or not blocking people or, you know, doing a spin move and fumbling the ball. But, you know, the players are also not playing the play calls. They're not putting the personnel groups out there. It's a total malfunction as a unit. And it's – look, I, it does it, – is – this the only year Walt Bell is going to be offensive coordinator? I don't know. He knows a lot more about football than I ever will know. Um, so it, it's it's just a total malfunction of a unit. And they have no identity. And when Tom Allen came in, he said he wanted his quarterback to be a mobile threat, uh, like a dual threat guy. And it just, just hasn't happened. Uh, you know, Michael Penix could run, but he was not a dual threat guy. He was a pocket passer who wanted to rocket the ball downfield. Um, you know, the only real dual threat guy they had was Peyton Ramsey, and they were fantastic with him. So it, it's your dual threat guy on this team is Dexter Williams and Brandon Source. Being not get not playing a true freshman, but you got to take. You know, I don't care what you promise Connor Bazelak, but you're here to win games, or you're going to be out. It's the, I think that's yeah, I, that Dexter I gets a development game at least, right? That's that's been an issue for me too, and I feel like he needs to develop. People tweet it, but just zero adjustments. I feel like at any point in the last five or so games, and it's uh, not like I, the X's and O's adjustments. It's personnel adjustments for me. Just it's but like, even when we adjust, like. You know, when Rutgers finally got the ball, like when they were starting to move the ball and you talk about Johnny Langan, guess what they did? Oh, you're going to bring Bryson Bonds in the box to cover a guy in the slot. You're going to have your third string safety come down and cover our tight end. They picked on him three or four times in a row. It, yep. uh, it didn't help that, that Brian Fitzgerald got hurt. Uh, yeah. With, with but that still, stuff. Like, if you know, like put a corner, I don't know, put a corner, let's just, just – I don't know. Which is, AJ, I, Barner ends up, AJ Barner ends up with the second most catches on Saturday for five yards. He has four catches for five yards. The guy that went to Big Ten Media Days, all this hype, he had five yards. Yeah. I mean, I, and, and, you know, and another head scratching thing look, I love Cam Jones and I know what he means to this team, but you could only travel with 74. Why is a guy who's not going to play when you need all this depth? going with the team uh, who else is gonna play i like i don't know i don't, <laughs> I, don't I, I mean uh, who are you gonna play i don't no one's gonna play i don't know i don't think um, that matters. travel travel omar cooper instead at this point they're gonna redshirt him or play him in the last three games because i think he played in the first one but he's played in four know. he's played in four games all right then he's probably done yep um, so it, it's i, I don't know James let's talk Adams about played. Yeah, let's talk about Tom Allen's future because that's a hot topic on on the internet right now. Is you know people are calling for him to get fired. The the buyout is super expensive. Um, it's around twenty five million dollars if you do it, if you give him the axe at the end of the year. I don't see it happening. It's not gonna happen. Everybody, I, I, everybody needs to stop. It's not gonna happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's upward no, of twenty. I'm frustrated. Oh. I'm frustrated, but it's it's not happening. So it does not it does not dip under twenty million dollars until December of next year. Yeah, it's I don't. It's not. Everybody needs to just stop. It's yeah. Well, it it's directly not, goes along with basketball. It, right? Not really. I mean, it it, it might, but it, it's. Well, if you're the what, athletic, I guess what it comes down to is like, what difference would it make if someone other than Allen? That's the way I look at it. Here's the yeah. thing: is I 
it's going to cost you, let's say they, you, you decide to get rid of them after this year and we'll call it an even $25 million. Okay. You're going to pay the next coach and you want it to be a good coach. Somebody who's, you know, wanted, you're not going to hire off the scrap people, but you know, let's say it's what Alan's are, making, which is about. Are we not gonna? <laughs> I don't know. What's the, the average salary? What do you somewhere yeah, between yeah. four and five million dollars a year? And the 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 salary line or the the contract length is probably at least five years. So you're looking at at least twenty to twenty five million. So that's fifty million right there for a head coach. Then you have to pay assistance uh, and, and things like that, which is probably another ten to twelve million. It's just, it's not happening. It's not. And unless there's a magic donor out there that nobody knows about, it's not happening. So it's, if you're Indiana, you have to ask yourself a couple questions. Has, has the Tom Allen era run its course? It very may well have. Um, but do you give them another year to figure it out and save a couple million dollars? Uh, you know, seven million dollars that could go towards, you know, uh, the the next coaching staff, upgrading facilities, whatever. Or do you pull the plug and, you know, bite the bullet and say, listen, it's you, if you keep Tom Allen, the fan base is going to go apathetic. They're not going to go to games. Fan fan support has been crowds have been really good the last two years. They have been. So you're looking at losing – is losing that money, you know, offset paying out $25 million for Tom Allen? I don't know. This, this era could have run its course. It, it, it might have. I'll look at it again at the end of the season. But nobody is writing a check for $25 million like they would with basketball and Archie Miller or, you know, God forbid Mike Woodson tanks this year and they go 9-11 in the Big Ten. People will pony up money for IU basketball, but they won't do it for football. So get, like Alex said, forget it. Move on, look at your other options. Maybe it's bringing in another offensive coordinator. Maybe it's some coaching staff changes, but it all starts with figuring out what you have on this team over the next four four games that you could hang your hat on and, and build something for, for 2023. Yeah. And it's quicker now than ever to stay relevant year to year with the portal, obviously, but especially on offense, I don't know. I don't know who's, who's watching unless you're at a smaller school and you want to play in the big 10, but I don't know who, who watches our games recruit wise or transfer portal wise and goes, yeah, that, that's what I want. That looks good. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I totally get it. It's not like you're Western Kentucky where Austin reads a division two quarterback going, Hey, they throw the ball a lot. This is my best path to the league. You know, I'm going to throw the ball 50, 60 times a game. Because that's what they did with Bailey Zappi. And now he's probably the next great quarterback for the New England Patriots. Um, but yeah, it, it's you, you got to figure do you cut bait and suck up the $25 million, or do you fish on, save yourself a little bit of money, um, and, and catch your breath a little bit? Because there are a lot of jobs open this year. And there are a lot of jobs that are better than Indiana Open this year. Yeah, I saw. There's, all, there's always going to be. <laughs> yeah. So, like, people take a deep breath. You got to ask yourself those questions. And if you're not writing a $25 million check, or you don't know somebody who's writing that check, it's probably not going to happen. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if in that like, if you don't have an indoor practice facility that you that you purposely don't show recruits on recruiting visits and you let no knock on other programs at IU, but they all have beautiful facilities. If you're letting other teams and other programs practice on Memorial state, like can you imagine somebody requesting practice time at Michigan or Ohio state on the football field? Can you imagine the field hockey team asking to condition or run sprint? It's not going to happen, but in the no, end, they do, maybe you do stadium stairs at Michigan stadium, but that's not, using the game field. I mean, it's. So it's, you know, 
we have yeah. football because the other schools have football, not because we want to have football, which breaks my heart. But you can say anything about the program, where we are now, the only constant now in over 150 years of football and 701 losses and counting is that we don't spend money on football. And there's a direct correlation between spending money on college football and winning. And for the life of me, I can't understand why people don't see that and don't understand that. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a pretty good investment, honestly. So yeah. it blows my mind, but it yeah. is what it is. So again, I'm, I'm as frustrated as anyone. After we lost yesterday, I was like, yeah, that, that, that's about right. Um, but, you know, if, if you don't have money to even have working lights in your indoor practice field or show your recruits the indoor practice field, no one's paying for that for a buyout of the entire coaching staff it's just not going to happen so no it's not which and is an entirely separate thing but it is it's what not. It is, so. and and i thought under fred glass they started to invest in football they they spent about 85 million dollars to to upgrade memorial stadium which is absolutely necessary uh and, and things like that so it's a you know they've invested the bare minimum i i would say to make the 100% necessary changes. Uh, they, you know, when, and I thought by the end of his tenure, Fred Glass started to get it. You know, they asked Tom out, what do you need to hire an offensive coordinator? Okay. Then they went out and hired Kalen DeBoer. Money was no object. Oh, uh, you needed money for David Ballou and all his whatever equipment. Fred Glass got it to him. And guess what? You went eight and five and six and two immediately, immediately. And, you know, now I, I, I get, you know, I don't know if money was the issue on why you hired Nick Sheridan. I, I get that Kalen DeBoer banged on the table for him, but he definitely took a pay cut. It wasn't paying somebody close to a million dollars or $800,000 a year to do that. Um, those are the investments that we're talking about. It's not, you know, it's not spending $150 million just to spend $150 million. It's okay. Let's not get back to where it was in the eighties where, look, Bill Mallory did a fantastic job making chicken uh, you know, chicken salad out of chicken shit. Indiana's facilities were terrible. And guess what? They didn't capitalize on the momentum. And guess what? If you look at the end of the Mallory era and the this part portion of the Tom Allen era, it's eerily similar. Both coaches were overly loyal to to an offensive uh, staff member that ended up, you know, it, it just didn't work. They never, uh, you know, they never evolved. Fan, you know, fan apathy sat, sat in. Bill Mallory was five and seventeen over his last two seasons. And he's noted as IU's greatest coach. So it's, you got to learn lessons from the past. And you never built up the facilities in the 80s. So now you had to spend $85 million in 2008 to build up, the, to, to get back to even. And now you had a chance to build and get that momentum and you haven't done it. That's where I think people are frustrated. And it's not just a lack of, you know, they have invested, but it's time to make another investment. You can't just do it and stop. It's time to make another investment so that when the next round of renovations come, you're not paying 85 million. It's you could do it for 30 million. You could do it for 25 million and things like that. Look, I use weight room is, is fantastic. Yeah. It's not football only, but whatever. Um, they have a new locker room that's up, probably up to par with, with a lot of other people. It's a Big Ten locker room. Where you're lacking is Mellencamp is like a plane hanger from the 1940s. Your press box is still there from the 60s. And I also think, Alex, you need a game day producer. Somebody in charge of making game days fun. Look, I was down at Rutgers. They have this thing, the Rutgers boardwalk, which is a, it's a Jersey thing. If you've ever been down to Atlantic city, but on the main street from the parking lots down to the stadium, they have food trucks, 
carnival games, beer gardens, uh, you know, stuff to buy things, alumni group set up, um, all that stuff. And they do it every week. It's not just a homecoming thing. They do it every week. And guess what? When your five-year-old asks, daddy, mommy, I want $10 to go win a whatever garbage, uh, you know, stuffed animal at the, the ring toss, you're going to give it to them. It's just like, can we get somebody who knows what they're doing to make Saturdays meaningful? It, it, like, I'm not even talking about the games. Winning will take care of itself. But to get people in Bloomington, find those extra revenue streams because you're not getting 100,000 people every weekend. Find those revenue streams. I mean, and Alex, we talked about it, the NIL stuff. It is so hard to get an Indiana jersey or a player jersey it's ridiculous. That was like NIL. You can get a basketball one now. Yeah. But that's like football. It, it's not even a, it's a high school level NIL thing. It's not even NIL 101. How can, hard is it? You can buy a game replica Rutgers personalized jersey of any player on the roster. But, you know, you can buy a basketball jersey on the Indiana NIL store that took seven months to put anything up, but you can't buy anything football except for one one different shirt design with the player's name on the back and it's all adidas they're both adidas schools so it, it, what gives and, and so to me it's indiana needs to start doing things a, a different way and not the same way that they've been doing it for 150 years uh because they they have sold games in the past to michigan state michigan and ohio state and they moved the game I, a home game against Penn State up to the RCA Dome into Washington, D.C. It's it's time for somebody who's not an IU basketball guy, who's not an Indiana guy in general, um, to come in and just give some fresh ideas. Because it's, look, we got to, to walk up the Rutgers Tunnel after the game, and they're blaring the Sopranos theme with all these lights in there. And it's like, that's not hard to do. It, it's well, not. Yeah. Do you like, you did the light renovation or whatever this summer at Memorial, right? And yeah, then you see all these other no light shows. No all light the other shows. schools have the light shows and the, I don't, I don't know. I get not having a light show at noon and they did, they have the same lights at Rutgers. I get it, it doesn't work at noon. But you had two night games early in the season that, that could have been awesome. Uh, I don't know if they showed it at Nebraska, but they, at the end of between the third and fourth quarters. Now I know everybody loves their William Tell overture and, and things like that, but they played thunderstruck. They turned out the lights, they had lightning on the field. It was, it was like, it was cool. Yeah. I awesome. even like the radio guys who have been, you know, covered NFL games and things like that. They had their phones out. were recording too. So just imagine if you're an 18 year old or 17 year old, and you're there, you go, okay, this is, this is kind of fun. You know, and IU needs to stop catering. I get that the, there's money in the old white guys and, and stuff with the old alumni and stuff like that. You need to cater to A, the students, and B, your student athletes, because that's what matters. And students who had, enjoy football, and I thought that that was um, – that was becoming a thing because the students crowds have been great the last two years that students become alumni who donate money. And if football matters to them, they will donate money to the football program. Mark, I was told Mark Cuban made his first million by selling a platform that he made to stream IU basketball. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. That's all that, you know, I mean, that's all you need. And and Cuban's a big alumni. I don't think he'll, outside of the Cuban Center, I don't think he donates to specific sports. He wants uh, to donate on that. He on record said he will never give or help money with any personnel or coaching thing. He said that multiple times. Yeah. So he's like an academic facilities guy and stuff like that. But, you know, who knows? The next Mark Cuban could be sitting in the student section for football who will say, you know, maybe make his first million in, in five. You have the Kelly school of business and, you know, the Cuban center and you can't, you can't market your football team. You can't put on a production 
that is any fun for anybody. There's look, it's a lot of fun to go down and in, into the lakes and Bloomington and all that stuff, but you got to make it an attraction. You can't just say, Hey, come down and watch the football team. It's not going to work, but that's, that's well, when they win, they'll, they'll come. No, you have to make money to invest and then you'll win. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. It, uh, sucky game. Um, Awful game. I'm, I'm pissed five, five in a row. I, again, you have after we lost to Maryland last week, I felt like that was the bow on the season. Two two years in a row now, the season is over before Halloween. It seemed like a dejected locker room from the from you and other people that were there. There were no other people there. It was me. Yeah, <laughs> I was the only one there. That me and a and a guy from Indiana HQ. But yeah, you you saw you know walking up the tunnel, you saw players sitting hands in their head, you know, head in their hands between the, you know, just sulking. And, you know, the players care. It's not a matter of them not caring. It's, it's, it's tough. It's coming to the point where, okay, you need to make a change, you know, personnel wise for the rest of the year. If that's a quarterback, if that's a, you know, running back and stuff like that, you got to see what you have for the next for the next year because Tom Allen I don't think is going anywhere at at least until the end of the 2023 season and I don't want like that's my like I don't I don't want want it to go you want want it I want this I want this to work so bad because he's a guy you know everybody talks about coach Hep and how he wanted to be here and that Allen was like the next coming of coach Hep and you know he look Hep was taken way too early um in 2007 with a brain tumor but Allen wants to be at IU you know it's from 2019 2020 people were well he's gonna leave he's gonna leave no he wants to be at IU he wants to be successful at IU and that's what that's like striking gold if you're IU football that's like finding your um your Bill Schneider at Kansas State or, you know, somebody like or Frank Beamer at, at, uh, at Virginia Tech and Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin. Those programs were absolutely awful until those guys came around. So, yeah, as I, if you're an IU fan, you want Tom Allen to work. I don't care if you like LEO, dislike LEO, think he talks or claps too much. You have a guy who turned around in Indiana defense 2016 you know, had them in the top 10. I know it was a COVID year and he wants to be at IU. That doesn't happen. So yeah. Could this be the end of the Tom Allen era? Sure. Do we want it to be the end of the Tom Allen era? No, because you wanted to work with this guy. You wanted to work with a guy who's from Indiana, who bleeds cream and crimson and, and, and things like that. So that that's, that's my, my rant for the night. Yeah, it seems like Tom Allen's more about building a legacy, more like, um, you know, Bob Knight and, you know, Barry Alvarez um, at Wisconsin, right? So I want it to work. I, I completely agree. Yeah, you, 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 need it, you need it to work. You do. Yeah, you yeah, need it to just... work. Totally, it seems dysfunctional again, top down, which sucks. Seems like another week now we used all of our kind of scripted plays on the first drive of offense after the kick return, used all your scripted plays, 14 nothing. You let Rutgers rip off 24 stride. <laughs> no, and it's like, okay, they they're talking to Basilak, they went to, they switched from a quarter defense to man defense. You can't find somebody who can meet the man coverage. You, you can't, you know, Cam Camper goes down to your best wide receiver. No disrespect to, to Cam Camper was somebody who was so under the radar. He went to Juco. That that's, you know, and we talk about the, the, the all time great recruiting classes at IU and, and the talent on this team. And you can't find somebody who can replace Cam Camper for, for half a game. Against Rutgers? Yeah, against Rutgers. I mean, come on. It, it's it, – Indiana's got to get out of the cycle of hiring a guy, firing a guy, saying, uh-oh, it was the coach's fault. 
No, it, it's there's a lot of blame to go around, and it starts at the top. Yeah, Tom, there are mistakes that Tom Allen has made. There are mistakes that the players have made. But it, it trickles down from the top, and that, that to me is where it starts. you got to start, okay, what do you need to fix this? That's the, that's your, if you're the AD, that's the question you have to ask. What do we need to do to fix IU football? Because that's the machine that's going to make everything go. And to those saying that IU needs to go to the MAC, well, great. You're not going to have a swimming and diving team. You're not going to have like women's soccer or, you know, men's soccer or as good of a women's and men's basketball team and things like that. Be careful what you wish for, because that might be coming down the road too. So the question is in that room, how do we fix Indiana football? Does this mean you need a new coach? Does this mean you have to upgrade facilities? Does this mean we have to look at NIL um, harder and, and start fundraising more? That's the big question. And that's the one that I'll be thinking about for the next five weeks until the season's over. Yeah. I don't so. know. Hockey sucks. Yep. It does, but uh, well, that, that that about does it for after the dust settles. Uh, Indiana heads into the bye week at three and five, one in whatever in the Big Ten, um, riding a five game losing streak. Not ideal. Uh, their next game is November fifth at home against Penn State. Uh, time has not been announced for that game. I expect it either tomorrow, or maybe even next Sunday, uh, as a six game push. Uh, then they go to Ohio State at Michigan State and Purdue for the bucket at home. Uh, four games. We'll have everything here for you. We're, we'll be your football therapist. We'll talk you through it. You know, be here to listen. Although if you get too crazy, I will mute you on Twitter because I am done with that toxic stuff uh, for my own mel- mental health. But uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, for Alex Compton, Zach Green, I'm Sammy Jacobs. Uh Keep coming back to HoosierHuddle.com. Follow us on Twitter at Hoosier underscore Huddle. Uh, was it like, subscribe, rate on, on YouTube as well. And uh, have a great evening, and, and we'll see you again in a couple weeks.